Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I robbed my butcher in broad daylight and he didn't even notice what was happening. One of my favorite butchers became my personal friend. And when I showed up at his shop, I was looking for a steal. Something big that feeds loads of people and would be perfect for my barbecue that wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg. This is what I took home. Do you know what it is? No, 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 nobody knows. And even personally, I haven't seen this cut as a whole, I think ever. If you showed me this, I wouldn't recognize it. And that's why the butcher also think that this isn't worth anything. But little does he know that this is actually very valuable. Because if I would call this a chuck steak and I would sell it online, I could make loads and loads of money. Of course, my butcher is a good friend of mine and I'm not really robbing him, but I'm just letting you know that if you buy a full technical cut like this and the butcher doesn't have anything to do with it, have you paid a kilogram price and have you do all the work, it is cheap as can be if you buy it as a technical cut. Of course, you're wondering what is he on about technical cuts? In America, they also call this the primal cut. And if you cut this into steaks yourself, you end up with a chuck steak. A primal cut cut into something freaking delicious. And if you look at this piece of meat, it looks like it's Wagyu. But I just got this at my local butcher with local Dutch meat. That intramuscular fat that sits on this piece of meat is just literally mind blowing. It feels like I robbed the butcher, even though I'm not too worried that he still made some money on it. So I don't have to feel guilty, but I end up with some beautiful result. What this steak needs now is some flavor. This is my Napoleon Prestige Pro and I'm going to fire up all burners. Then I'm going to put a couple of bell peppers and some tomato, some tomatoes. So just in case these are onions, they're going to go on as well. And I'm going to let the barbecue roast these ingredients and thereby we're going to get more sweet onions and more sweet bell peppers. There we go. That is what I'm looking for. Bit of a char on the outside, nice and roasted, cooked all the way through. So I'm going to take this off the barbecue and put it in some aluminum foil. And after about 10 minutes of resting, we can open up the package and they look like this. The same. Not the same, not the same. Look, they shrunken down and the outside skin is letting go of the meat. And that's what I need. I need to peel this, get rid of the skin because the skin is always gonna be the part that's in your way. If you get it in your teeth, it's gonna be gnarly. And normally I wouldn't care much about those things, but now we're gonna be sophisticated. We stole from the butcher and now we're gonna be snobs. Great combination of characters. <laughs> I'm gonna quarter the onions, take the core out of the bell peppers, and then put that in my blender. I'm also gonna add 10 garlic cloves, a whole bunch of parsley, a tablespoon of thyme leaves, two tablespoons of paprika powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, a tablespoon of ground black pepper, and two tablespoons of salt. I'm gonna grind that up into a smooth paste, and once it's almost done, I'm going to add 100 milliliters of olive oil. Give it one more blitz, and then the marinade is done. Of course, you always have to test what you're making and it should taste salty and very powerful. <laughs> Why did I take so much? <laughs> Boah, there's nothing spicy in there. It's just the garlic and the onion. It's like, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> if you have that in your marinade, you know you did a good job. Boah. Time to add that marinade to my beautiful chuck sticks. I'm just gonna pile them up with layers and layers of that marinade and then I'm going to rub it in with my hands so I'm sure that we get a little bit of that marinade everywhere. Then I'm covering it up with some aluminum foil and I'm gonna stick it in the fridge for at least 24 hours. Ooh, I know you guys can't smell this. Oh, but this smells freaking amazing. Oh. It smells so amazing. It is super, super intense. It smells really garlicky. Really garlicky, really oniony, and a little bit of paprika, but amazing. Oh, look at all this good stuff. Without further ado, I wanna get this on my rotisserie and start roasting. The first thing that I'm gonna do is to prep the rotisserie, and I'm gonna need a large onion for that. Get the biggest one you can find, and then slice it in half. I'm gonna take half of that onion, and put it on the skewer. And that's going to hold the meat in place. Now the trick comes that I'm gonna have to put 
this beef on this rotisserie. That's always a bit tricky, but I'm sure we're gonna manage. There we go. And now you can see that this beef is sticking out quite a lot. Of course, I don't want it to stick out this much, so I'm gonna cut off the ends and put it on the skewer once again. Take out the next piece. And once you got all of it on, it's time to put the other half of the onion on top. Squeeze it through and, and then secure it. And the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that I have this in the right position on the grill so it's centered. Hold it right here. This is about the position and as you can see, I'm off center and I need to go to the right just a little bit. So I'm just gonna slide it a little bit and that makes it the perfect position. Check again. That's center, that's the way it's supposed to be. Now let's get the barbecue ready. First thing that I wanna do is get rid of my grill grates. Then I'm gonna put in the rotisserie. And as you can see, I need to do some adjusting with the meat. These flaps that hang so low that they hit the bars, that's not gonna work. Then I'm going to place a drip tray underneath the roast. I'm gonna fire up the outside burners. I'm gonna close the lid and give this roast about half an hour to get up to temperature. The meat has been running for a while and as you can see now, we have, well, I wouldn't call it a big mess, but this is not what I'm looking for. I got the floppy bits flopping around. So this is gonna be our first cut. And for my first cut, I'm gonna be using the new Katai series from Forged. And because of the long blade, I'm easily gonna be able to cut away the meat, move it along the rotisserie, and then the floppy bits are gonna come off and I'm dropping them in the tray. Of course, they're not gonna go to waste. And you might have already noticed that I also put some pins in to secure the meat from individually rotating. And because we don't have that weight anymore, I can now start compressing the roast again. You see what happens? It becomes a lot and a lot smaller. And then I can remove the pins and it will be able to hold the meat on its own. Now I'm gonna let this rotate for a little bit longer and then we're going to turn on the back burner. It's been 10 minutes and you can see that the rest of the meat that we cut off started cooking again. Now I'm going to put the tray back underneath and this is the moment where I'm going to turn on my back burner. Now if you don't have a back burner, don't worry about it, just hit on all burners because I want to go full throttle. But in this case, I got a beautiful back burner that's going to give me infrared heat on the roast and making the crust real awesome. Real awesome? Is that even a thing anymore in 2023? Gas on, on the back burner, ignition. The burner in the back is going to heat up the grill grate that sits in front of it. And every time the crunch comes, we're going to carve it off, getting the best pieces off, exposing meat to that heat, creating more deliciousness. And that is what I want it to look like. Beautiful roast chuck steak on the rotisserie. Look at how good that looks. It looks juicy. We got loads of fat rendering down. We got the chunkiness. Just look at these juicy chunks of meat. Crunchy crusts, juicy inside, marinated with loads and loads of flavor. I got some delicious sandwiches and I never tasted it before. So we're gonna make a sandwich right now, just you and me. Let's put some lettuce on it and tomato. And of course, this is the moment where you can put some garlic on, but I am not gonna put some garlic on. Personally, I think the meat just tastes too good to put a sauce on it that's gonna rule everything. Sauce is the boss, that's what they call it. And there's a good reason for that, because if you put sauce on something, it's gonna take over. And this time, I just wanna enjoy the moment. All the effort, all the work that I put in to make this taste great, I'm not gonna sauce over that. I'm just gonna load up my sandwich. Wow, look at that. <laughs> mm. Mm. I must say, a uh, chuck steak, of course, has a little bit more chew to it, a little bit more bite, but I don't mind doing the chewing when you get this much flavor. And the marinade, wow. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And don't forget out to check out the recipe. It's uh, down below in the video description, the link to our website. And I also put in the link for my new set of Katai series from Forged. So if you want to check that out, much to blast. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.